we light this candle. And I'd like to invite Claire to come forward to light our candle. We light this candle, this Christ candle, and may its light guide us to truth talking today. Truth talking into traveling good paths. May we in turn share the light with those we meet until it spreads to all peoples worldwide. And Claire has offered to do our acknowledgement of territory. We begin this time by, wor uh, by worship the acknowledge that we are meeting of the land of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee people. This land has been in inhabited by indigenous people from the beginning. We thank all the generations of indigenous people who, uh, who have taken care of this land and have been in stewards for thousands of years. Uh, we, give <laughs> we give thanks um, for uh, for the countless ways that they have assisted the, sel the settler yeah, people who uh, come inhabited, inhabit uh, the land. We also recognize the, in the, the, the Métis, Inuit, and other indigenous people who have made in shaping and strengthening, and strengthening this region and, province and provinces. <laughs> and, um, and Canada as, as a whole, as a whole. May the Creator hold us gently in this time and as all mourn the, the loss of an, an innocent indigenous children's life. Miigwech of, of all my relations. All my relations. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. And may the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we welcome you all to worship. We welcome our online church family. And please join me in the call to worship. In the presence of Creator, we gather. People carrying burdens we may not know about, looking for comfort, folks needing their spirits refreshed. We draw together hoping for that touch that will enliven us, longing to be embraced in arms of love and understanding. Help us to put aside our differences and see the earth as you see it, boundary free. You call us all babies, toddlers on unsteady feet, school-aged children with curious minds, teens with questing spirits, full of youthful confidence one moment and like frightened children the next. We are called as adults trying to take good paths, watching out for the next generations and those easing into their winter years, passing on our teachings. We are all kin in this meeting place, whether we gather in person or through technology, our spirits joining to say miigwech, for all that we have been blessed with. Thanks be to God for the goodness in our lives. Amen. Let us pray. All encompassing God, you who called creation out of chaos, you breathed the sacred word ruah, a Hebrew word meaning breath, spirit, and life came into being. Your magnificence is a holy mystery that we are too human to be able to comprehend. We give thanks for that which is beyond our comprehension. It allows us to dream and imagine. We give all praise and glory to you, most holy, for holding us in all the seasons of our days to love and to cherish in this life and in an everlasting life. We are in awe of our covenanted love and journey with you. Amen. 
And let us turn to More Voices. Our More Voices hymn book looks like this. Let's sing number one. be seated. And I would like to invite the kids to come forward, to come sit in the first pew here, the first bench, for a little story.
Saint Clair and Rosie are going to stay behind. That's okay. I have a beautiful book to share with you. It's one of my favorites. And it is written by Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and it's called God's Dream. The pictures are beautiful, too. Dear child of God, what do you dream about in your loveliest of dreams? Do you dream about flying high or rainbows reaching across the sky? Do you dream about being free to do what your heart desires or being treated like a full person no matter how young you might be? Do you know that God dreams? Do you know what God dreams about? If you close your eyes and look with your heart, I am sure, dear child, that you will find out. God dreams about people sharing. God dreams about people caring. God dreams that we reach out and hold one another's hands and play one another's games and laugh with one another's hearts. But God does not force us to be friends or to love one another. Dear child of God, it does happen that we get angry and hurt one another. Soon we start to feel sad and so very alone. Sometimes we cry, and God cries with us. But when we say we're sorry and forgive one another, we wipe away our tears and God's tears too. Have you ever apologized to someone? Have you ever said sorry to someone? How does that feel? Good? Does it feel good? Has anyone said sorry to you before? Has anyone apologized to you before? Yeah. How does that feel? When someone says sorry to you, if they did something to hurt you and they said sorry, how does that make you feel? Good? Good, yeah. I think it's important to, to apologize and to say sorry when we've, we've hurt someone or something. Each of us carries a piece of God's heart within us. And when we love one another, the pieces of God's heart are made whole. God dreams that every one of us will see that we are all brothers and sisters. Yes, even you and me. Even if we have different mummies and daddies or live in different faraway lands even if we speak different languages or have different ways of talking to God, even if we have different eyes or different skin, even if you are taller and I'm smaller, even if your nose is little and mine is large. Dear child of God, do you know how to make God's dream come true? It's really quite easy. As easy as sharing, loving, caring, as easy as holding, playing, laughing. As easy as knowing we are family because we are all God's children. Will you help God's dream come true? Let me tell you a secret. God smiles like a rainbow when you do. You know, God created the universe and God created the earth. So the earth is God's. But you know what? God has told us to take care of it. Yeah. 
God has told us to take care of it. And it, the earth is a beautiful, beautiful gift. And it's not only a gift for us to love and to take care of, but it's also a gift for our, our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren for year, in years to come, for, for them to love too. There's a, in the United Church Creed, there's a line that says we need to respect creation, which means we need to look after creation. And that's people, that's animals, those are big animals, they're birds that fly, little tiny bugs that we're called to look after God's beautiful creation that God has told us to take care of. Let's pray. So I'm going to say a line, and then can you repeat? So let's pray. Dear Creator, you are the creator of the universe. We thank you for giving us this beautiful earth. Help us to take care of it, to respect it. Be with us so that we can walk gently upon earth and share what you have given to all of us. Help us to care for it and rejoice in it with all your children. Amen. Thanks for coming up, you guys. You can go back to your little activity area. And I'm going to call you up again soon to listen to a music video, OK? And Nora, I think. getting hard to get up here. <laughs> the first uh, reading is from Galatians 3, verse 28. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And the second reading is a, a paraphrase of Psalm 106, verses 1 to 5. Praise our Creator, O me which give thanks to the Maker, for Turtle Island nurtures us. Love lives forever in ancestors dancing in the Aurora Borealis. Who can truth talk the mighty doings of the Creator? or drum all their praises. Joyful are those who observe justice, who work for right relations at all times. Remember me, O Great Spirit, when you show honor to your people. Help us when you lead us into places of protection. We see the grateful hunting of creatures, generous gathering, an abundant harvest and prosperity of our King, that we may dance in the ceremonies of our nation's people, that we may glory in your ancestry, all my relations. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Nora. As Chris is uh, putting the screen up, For our music ministry, um, Betty Davy couldn't be here, but she met with Chris at Battersea Church and recorded the music ministry. Betty um, was born in Bella Coola, which is in BC, a very isolated community, lived with indigenous people um, till she was about 15, then came to Ontario. She was a teacher, then got a calling to be a minister, 
and went back to Bella Coola as their minister when, um, for 10 years after she was ordained. It was her first uh, charge. It was a two-point charge. And um, Paul and Betty have been back a few times. And so she's going to share a song. And I'm going to, kids, if you want to come up, um, let's see, even, yeah, would they be able to see if they're, oh, in the middle, actually, kids, if you go, yeah, if you come up and just sit in the middle of the, uh, on the floor, you don't mind seeing the floor, do you? I'll sit with you. Hello. I'd like to introduce to you um, my drum. It was given to me when I was ordained by a friend, a chief in the Coast Salish band of Qualicum Beach on Vancouver Island. And his wife was a good friend of mine. And then it, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about these, what we call hand drums. They um, actually came to the people on the West Coast from uh, the Cree, uh, the more prairie provinces on our, in our country. Originally on the West Coast, because they were barred off by the mountains, they used long hollow logs and uh, they could line up a, a group of people along the one side of the log, or both sides, I guess, and uh, do a lot of drumming. As you know, drumming and uh, Chris has used his Boran drum and it's from Ireland and they tell us that it's meant to represent our heartbeat or the heartbeat of the land. So this is what the native people, the indigenous people of Canada, North America and even South America use a lot of the time now. So I'd like to sing for you a song, a hymn actually, it's in Voices United, number 239, and uh, came to uh, our village, the New Hulk village of Bella Coola, to a woman by the name of Doreen Clelleman. She was one of the elders, and she gave this to our hymn book committee when they were putting the hymn book together. If Katie Koopman looks familiar, she should. A few years ago, um, I was trying to remember what year it was. Was it 18? That was 2018. Um, it's hard to believe, but 2018, um, Katie came to talk to us about her love of Fort Hope. Do you remember that? And her love of the um, Res Girls hockey team. I, yeah, yeah, that was a few years back, and um, since then, Katie has joined the True North Aid in the role of Reconciliation Program Coordinator. 
Engaging settler Canadians in conversation is a passion of hers. And on a bit of a um, personal note, uh, we're neighbors. Yes, it's two kilometers down the road and it doesn't really feel like, yeah, it, another road and uh, two or three kilometers down the road, but we're still in the same vicinity and uh, don't see each other enough. But um, I also, we kind of have just crossed paths in different, in different ways. Um, her husband, Steve Koopman, we went to high school together, and uh, you probably have seen Steve Koopman um, on the news, yeah, <laughs> and uh, a police officer in Kingston. And both are wonderful photographers, so we also have done a lot of weddings together in the past and uh, worked together at, uh, at different weddings. So we've kind of passed our paths have crossed in different ways. But uh, please join me in, in welcoming our guest speaker, Katie Koopman. Thank you so much. I like to give my husband a run for his money and standing up in front of people talking, so it can't just all be about him, right? <clears throat> but I say to you, good morning. It's great to be here in person and online. At the invitation of Pastor Heather, I speak to you this morning as a neighbor, friend, and fellow settler living on land, indigenous to the Mississauga, the Haudenosaunee, Huron-Wendat, and Anishinaabe people. Um, a caveat to me beginning is I want to speak directly to anyone in the room who identifies as being Indigenous. And I hope that you can hear the words of an ally come through in what I share today. Today I join with your congregation wearing my orange shirt, a simple action that pays tribute to the residential school experience of Phyllis Webstad. Her grandmother had purchased for her a beautiful shiny orange shirt to wear to St. Joseph's Mission School, a residential school just outside Williams Lake, BC, where her grandmother was taking her. Phyllis was six years old and proud of that back to school orange shirt. She knew her grandmother could not afford much and she appreciated all the more. At the mission, that orange shirt was taken from her. She was separated from her cousin and her hair was cut. She was put into a dormitory with strangers. Phyllis is a third generation residential school survivor both her mother and grandmother also attended. From 1831 to 1996, over 130 federally funded church run residential schools were attended by more than 150,000 indigenous children. September was chosen to remember the children who did not return home and to honor those who survived. September was chosen because that was and is when children returned to school, but also when they were taken away from their homes to attend residential school. An elder attending a Truth and Reconciliation Commission event in Vancouver a few years ago told Phyllis that September is the crying month. And here we are today, a couple of weeks into October, remembering together the crying month, whether we wear an orange shirt or not. So my message to you today is about truth, relationship, and responsibility. Two core fundamentals to our Christian teaching. What is the truth about what we believe? How is this truth lived out in relationship? How do we hold ourselves responsible for those and to those around us. And I'd like to share this message in the context of our collective accountability as non-Indigenous Christians and citizens living in Canada in this time of reconciliation. So allow me to read today's scripture again. Um, this is from the mes message. In Christ's family, there can be no division into Jew and non-Jew, slave and free, male and female, among us, you are all equal. That is, we are all in a common relationship with Jesus Christ. So let's unpack this. The truth in this scripture is that we are all in a common relationship with Jesus Christ. 
In the relationship we cultivate with one another, well, there can be no division. And lastly, our collective responsibility reminds us that we are all equal. Galatians 3.28, it's short and it's to the point. There's not much to argue with if we take it at face value. So I want to draw your attention to the verse just before, verse 27, as quoted from the New Living Translation. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. Ever meet a freshly baptized Christian? They're brimming with joy. They want to tell everyone who will listen about their new personhood and the family they are now a part of. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes, like an orange shirt. I thought of six-year-old Phyllis and her orange shirt when I read that verse. I picture this beaming little person proud and ready to show herself in that shirt at her new school. Like a new Christian might, showing off the Jesus they just put on. And I'm heartbroken to think that those representing the same Jesus Christians find truth in, the same Jesus within whom there is no division, the same Jesus we claim to be equals in, these people took her shirt and her childhood. Wearing an orange shirt today or on September 30th, well, it's an easy way to unite, an easy way to make a collective statement to support Phyllis and to believe her experience. We can nod our heads in agreement in truth that the residential school experience has left a tragic legacy of intergenerational trauma. Just as it is easy for Christians to nod our heads in agreement in truth that we are all in a common relationship with Jesus Christ. The outward appearance of a sport jersey, a brand, a car, a political lawn sign, an orange shirt, or a crucifix, all visible individual identifiers of a truth we believe in and want others to know about. In Christ's family, there can be no division into Jew and non-Jew, slave and free, male and female. Among us, you are all equal. That is, we are all in a common relationship with Jesus Christ. In Christ's family, there can be no division. Show me a family, any family, Christian or not, with no division. We divide ourselves in all sorts of ways and by varied measures. Some divisions are clear, others hidden for one reason or another. We say we're family, we say we're community, we say we're Canadian, and I say I'm not convinced we are. Because we're holding close untruths that are sugar-coated by these visible identifiers. In Christ's family, there can be no division into Jew and non-Jew, slave and free, male and female. This scripture is almost 2,000 years old, and it reminds us that race, class, and gender cannot divide us. And yet here we are, race, class, gender, three major issues that continue to divide us today and at all levels of our daily living. Three major issues that are woven into a very hostile and complicated fabric of historical and current division between non-Indigenous and Indigenous people in Canada. Holding close to untruths, or put another way, we harbor unconscious bias of what we think is true. Some Canadians think that residential schools didn't even exist. Some Canadians think that residential schools or the government had no intention to harm Indigenous people. Some Canadians think that the schools were not as bad as reported. The unconscious bias of non-Indigenous Canadians can't perceive that they still benefit from a system that was created at the expense of another race, also called colonialism. Some of us are so fragile in our pride that we can't see our own divisiveness. So the other day, I pointed out a perfectly misargued comment a woman had made on a National Post article about National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. This was on Facebook. There were over 270 comments. I went through most of them because I like to glean the temperature of where we're at 
with truth and reconciliation. And almost half were just racist drivel. And this woman said, quote, I'm passionate about Native issues and wear an orange shirt, but at some point they're going to have to get over it. Let me... So this commenter could not have known they would have made it into a Sunday church message about truth and division. Let me say clearly that one cannot be passionate about Indigenous issues, wear an orange shirt, and then gaslight an entire group of people by telling them you have a measuring stick of grief. Because if Canadians, if Christians, are going to be truthful, then we've got to be all in. We've got to know how, we've got to know and understand Canada's timeline of history that calculately sought to erase an entire people. We need truthful facts. Like knowing what is and where to find the Bagot Commission Report from 1845, the Ryerson Report from 1847, the Gradual Civilization Act from 1857, the Gradual Enfranchisement Act of 1869, the Dominion Land Act of 1872, the Indian Act 1876, and the Report on Industrial Schools for Indians and Half-Breeds in 1879. All of these found online in the Canadian Government Library Archives. They support Canada's removal, assimilation, and genocidal acts against Indigenous people. When we consider the pre-Confederation extraction of resources, the establishment of the Northwest Mounted Police, and you know what my husband does for a living, the building of the Can uh, Canadian Pacific Railway, the forced removal of Indigenous nations from their land, the justification of residential schools, we are confronted with the fact that Canada was birthed out of division with the irony to unite. When we understand and appreciate this timeline, the pieces of our collective history begin to fit together. Wearing your orange shirt speaks to the existence of these truths that were created to divide along race, class, and gender. In Christ's family, there can be no division into Jew and non-Jew, slave and free, male and female. Among us, you are all equal. That is, we are all in a common relationship with Jesus Christ. The truth that, as Christians, we are all in a common relationship, not just with Jesus, but one another. In our relationships, inside our Christian bubble or out, there can be no division. And lastly, our collective responsibility reminds us that we are all equal. Again, verse 27 reads, All who have been united in Christ... Let me suggest to you that being united doesn't make us equal, Christian or otherwise. And I hope that we can stop lying to ourselves otherwise. Because this side of heaven doesn't allow for all people to be equal. An example, all Christians believe that Jesus Christ is Savior. We are united by a core faith. But not all Christian churches ordain women. Men and women remain unequally yoked while decidedly living a common truth demonstrated in some churches, although united by faith, there remains unequal participation. Another example, regardless of race, class, or gender today, Canadian citizens aged 18 years and older can vote. But voting does not ensure equality itself. Policy does. And there are some very real truths about inequitable socioeconomic and cultural systems and policies that exist in Canada currently. That they are a direct result of the legacy of residential schools. The truth is that there exist decades-long boiled water advisories on reserves. Not just in northern remote communities, but on accessible reserves like Tyendinaga. The truth is that poorly built housing in indigenous communities give way to mold. You're talking about maybe 800 square foot houses and 12 people who live inside, and you can imagine the condensation on a cold day and the mold that ends up growing. 
The truth is that systemic racism is found within institutions that should be protecting people, that systemic racism is found within health care that should be healing people, that the education of Indigenous youth continues to be underfunded, that Inuit youth have the highest suicide rates. There are more truths. But I end my list of these truthful divisions with this. The truth that Canada is a beautiful and generous country and we know we can do better. The truth that Christians find in Galatians 3.28, you are all equal. We know we're supposed to be all equal, but what happens when we're not? So if we know we are equal, but our society and structures demonstrate otherwise, there is an implied responsibility that we have to our family, to our community, and to our country. Patty Krawick is an Anishinaabe uh, woman of, um, also of Ukrainian descent. She's a wife, mother, author, podcaster, advocate, speaker, my new friend. And she asks in her newly released book called Becoming Kin, who claims you, who are your kin, and what are your responsibilities and to whom are you responsible? She asks the reader these questions because if we're going to be in relationship with one another, how real are we going to be? What truths are we willing to accept? And Patty also asks, and hold, hold on to this, what do we do with bad kin? In other words, how are we holding our own responsible? Our own families, uh, the Christians in our own circle, what do we do with these people who are representing otherwise? In the same way that we claim Jesus as Savior, in the same way that we call one another kin because we're united in Jesus, in the same way that we are called as Christians to hold one another equal, Canadians, too, are called to understand, reflect, and then act upon the truth of our historical and current tensions. The visible identifiers of what we believe, wearing an orange shirt or wearing a crucifix, well, that's the easy part. The hard part is showing up to do the work that is asked of us by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, that is asked of us by Indigenous friends, colleagues, and family members. So to be honest, I wasn't exactly sure how to end this message. I know it's heavy. I know it seems like virtue signaling. You might be uncomfortable. You may not even be happy with what I've shared. And I'm open to dialogue afterwards and at another time if it's suitable. Let me just share with you what my friend Patty shared with me, that we are all complicit in something. She says, Katie, I'm a Native woman, and I have a mortgage title. I own land. She says, and I'm married to Gary. He's a white guy. <laughs> We're all complicit in something. We're not asked to live pure lives. We can't. As Christians, we know that we can't. But at the heart of Christianity, as it should be with all of us as citizens, it is relationship. And what I believe to be true is that we have been invited to enter into relationship despite what was, what is, I believe in what still could be between non-Indigenous and Indigenous Canadians. A common relationship with no division, moving forward in equality. That ends my main message. It is good to be back and see familiar faces. Thank you for having me. I extend an invitation if anybody, it's kind of last minute, but if anyone is available uh, the following weekend, I am hosting a retreat just north of Perth Road Village. It's uh, Patty will be there. Um, it's like a weekend long book club based on Patty's book called Becoming Kin. Um, we're going to move beyond the orange shirt, beyond um, you know, our own non-Indigenous investment into, say, Indigenous music and art. Like, we need to go beyond that checklist. And this retreat will go deeper. It's going to be beautiful, it's going to be fun, and it's going to be meaningful. And you can see me after for details. You're more than welcome to stay the night in a nice heated cabin in the woods. You can come for the day. We can work out a different cost for that. But, um, you know, if any of this intrigues you, let me know. I'd be happy to chat afterwards. Thank you so much.
like to repeat what I said at Battersea. I, first, I just love listening to sermons because I don't get a chance to very often. And two, when I listen to a sermon, I, I'm looking for two things. One, to learn something new and to be challenged, and both were, were done today. And I got to hear it twice, and I learned even more new things today, or at Inverary, and was challenged even more. And what I love about recording it, the messages is I can go and listen to it again, which I think I will, and uh, pick up uh, more and more. So thank you, Katie. Let's sing, In Christ There Is No East or West, Voices United hymn book. For our guests, that looks like this, Voices United 606. may be seated. At our session meeting, when we talked about having an um, orange shirt Sunday indigenous prayer service, um, a few members of the session said, wouldn't it be great if we extended the invitation to our congregational members to share a short reflection about, you know, their learnings or their questions or um, just a short little reflection, and I apologize, I totally forgot to extend that invitation, but the conversation doesn't have to end today. We can have another service um, anytime uh, where we continue this and go deeper, like uh, Katie mentioned. Um, so thank you to Sue for coming and whispering in my, my ear that she did her homework and she has a little reflection, um, and I, I, I do apologize for forgetting that whole session conversation, but Sue, Come on up and share a few of your uh, readings and learnings. Is it on? It's on. It's on. Um, thank you, Katie, for that. That was very challenging and wonderful for us to be thinking on. Um, and you may be familiar with this book. It was recommended to me. I haven't, I have to be honest, I haven't yet read it, but I did read a paragraph from it that I thought was quite relevant. It's called Native, Identity, Belonging, and Rediscovering God by Caitlin B. Curtis. I don't know if you've heard of it or not. Um, and the part that, and there's also another, a little poem that I'd like to read, but the part that uh, hit me was called Journeying Stories. No matter who we are or where we come from, we are people who journey. We long for community. We long for oneness with the, with the sacred. We long to be seen and known and to see and know the world around us. Part of the human journey is knowing what it means to grieve, to celebrate, to get lost and to be found again and again. If it weren't so, we wouldn't be human. And to be human is to know the journey of transformation, to know what it means to change and become, and often to step back into who we were before. In my life, journey has meant telling the truth, 
coming to terms with the trauma in my own story and leaning into the trauma and pain of others with honest listening so that together we learn how to be people who walk alongside one another in order to heal. And in keeping with that, um, a lovely poem was sent to me that I would love to share with you. Um, I have to read it off my phone, I'm sorry, and I have to enlarge it, so I may read it a little funny. It's called Remembering the Children Prayer. God of our ancestors, who holds the spirits of our grandmothers and grandfathers and the spirits of our grandchildren, remembering the children, we now pledge ourselves to speak the truth and with our hearts and our souls to act upon the truth we have heard of the injustices lived, of the sufferings inflicted, of the tears cried, of the misguided intentions imposed, and of the power of prejudice and racism which we allowed to smother the sounds and laughter of the forgotten children. Hear our cries of lament for what we allowed to happen and for, for what we will never, sorry, and what we will never be. In speaking and healing and acting upon the truth, may we as individuals and as a nation meet the hope of a new beginning. Great creator God who desires that all creation live in harmony and peace, remembering the children. We dare to dream of a faith of, re of a path of reconciliation when apology from the heart leads to healing of the heart and the chance of restoring the circle. When justice walks with all, where respect leads to true partnership, where the power to change comes from each heart. Hear our prayer of hope and guide this country of Canada on a new and different path. Amen. Thank you, Sue. For our time of offering, once again, our offering plates are actually at the back table. And um, you can, if you brought offering, you can place it there. And uh, let's take a moment. Um, to offer these gifts is a sign of our commitment to share the world's resources so that all will live in God's abundance. Grateful for all that God our Creator has given us and mindful of how we might share our abundance, let us offer our thanks. And let us dedicate the offering we've received this morning or may receive in the week ahead. Let us pray. Creator God, we return some of the abundance of our lives to share with others who need a caring touch. Here is the work of our hands, and here is the love of our hearts. Accept them and use them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tender and loving creator, we're all part of the delicate web of life. When one thread is plucked, the ripples are widely felt. May the uncertainties and concerns we hold close to our hearts by, be gentled by the love we have of you and the support of each other. You know the longing of our hearts for a just society for all of your beloved children. When we are cut, we bleed the same color. When we donate blood, it provides the same life-giving, sustaining gift with no knowledge of race. We don't understand the conflicts and hatred, which aren't new. Have they always existed? We pray for people living 
in troubled places, for refugees needing homes and relocation, for people without safe drinking water. Rabboni, Jesus, may your teachings lead us all to speak the same language of loving you, ourselves, and our neighbors. Gentle people's harsh feelings and opinions restore our gratitude and refresh our faith and grant us dreams of connection and harmony. May your light and love encircle and envelope us all as we rest in the promise of your goodness. Living Spirit, we are all relations in your family. We give thanks for our blessings. And let us continue in praying the Lord's Prayer according to your tradition. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from them. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It's a song of praise to the Maker, hymn number 30 in more voices.
may we travel our lands in gentle ways, caring for creation as in turn she cares for us. And Creator God, may your light and love encircle and envelope us all as we rest in the promise of your abundance. Go in peace with wisdom and with gratitude, all my relations. Miigwech. Amen. Mm -hmm.